Crankbaits are a favorite lure of many anglers, and in this episode, we're diving deep and shallow into the subject of this lure category. We have some seasoned anglers sharing their expertise to help you find and catch more fish. During our highlight destination feature, we're gonna showcase the abundant fishing and angling opportunities throughout North Dakota. Our buzz bite fishing reports will share the current patterns and bites across the upper Midwest. And our cool product segment will showcase some crankbait fishing gear and tackle. This is Angling Buzz brought to you by Omnia Fishing, a smarter tackle shopping experience. Crankbaits are a very diverse family of lures. When looking at them from the microscopic baits for panfish and trout, moving up to big crankbaits for muskie and pike, and well, everything in between when it comes to bass and walleye. There's a lot of variables when you're selecting crankbaits. High buoyancy, suspending, sinking, big lip baits, deep diving baits, shallow running square bills, and when you're looking at the different color patterns, they can be bright fluorescence to natural bait fish. We're gonna kick the show off with multi-species expert, Tony Roach. He's gonna share when and where he likes to cast shad wraps. Some of the more effective situations where you're casting shad wraps and catching walleyes would be in situations where you have current dumping into a lake, for example, uh, inlets, outlets on uh, of lakes where you have rivers dumping in or out. Also on the river themselves, whether you're pitching up onto a wing dam or you're casting into slack water and then working these baits back to the boat. Or like we're doing today, we're on a, a mid-lake structure. It's a hump that comes up out of deep water, especially when this is wind blown and the wind's really cranking in here. These walleyes are up here chasing bait. They're feeding, they're moving across the top of this flat. Same can be said for weed lines. To effectively fish weed lines with shad wraps, it's really easy. You can cover a lot of water, you can power fish. Now, most of the time when I'm casting a shad wrap, I want distance. Distance is key to getting that bait out as far as possible and working that bait back to the boat. Now, I like to use like a glass rod. This is a spinning glass rod. It's a legend glass from St. Croix. They also make a casting model. This is a 7.2 medium moderate power. I can feel every little tick of this bait, so if I get deflections off the bottom, if this bait gets uh, followed up by vegetation or something, I can feel every little thing. But also, and the biggest, I guess the, the biggest attribute to using this rod would be the fact that I get a lot of distance out of that bait. I can cast this really small bait a long distance. I'm using a 131 Gore from Suffix. I've got a fluorocarbon leader, because most of the time when I'm retrieving this bait, it's on a steady retrieve but I add pauses or jerks in there. I also like to dig this bait off the bottom. I like that to hit rocks and get a deflection bite. So many times walleyes will chase shad wraps when you're casting. You've gotta add pauses, jerks, or a deflection into that bait, bouncing it off something, and they're gonna strike that bait. But if you're doing that, you're adding long casts, short pauses, you're gonna have a lot of fun catching walleyes with shad wraps, trust me. It's one of the funnest ways to fish when you're casting baits and catching walleyes. Tony, I agree with you 100% about the shad wrap and walleyes. My favorite hard bait. Recently, in about the past five years, there's been a lot of interest in mini baits, hard baits for crappies and bluegills. You heard me right, crappies and bluegills. I'll show you some of them. I've really been having a lot of fun fishing these things. This is the newest one on a black and there, this is a, a, a Rapala Countdown Elite in her honey of a bait. We did really good on it this year. Little X wrap, can't go wrong with that. Little tiny crankbaits like this, killer on, on big bluegills, even lipless crankbaits. The interest in downsizing and using hard baits for panfish is going off the charts. And why? Because you catch bigger fish with them. Yes, you've really dialed in hard bait fishing for big slab crappie and giant bluegill. Up next is Bassmaster Elite Series Pro and Bassmaster Classic Champion, Jeff Gussie Gustafson, smallmouth specialist, of course. Now, Jeff, if you had to choose one crankbait for smallmouth bass, what would it be? So for me, it's a Bagley uh, Sunny Bee. That's just a real good fish catcher, has been for years, and you can see it's sort of a smaller uh, bite size crankbait, perfect for smallmouths. This one dives in the six to eight foot range and again, just a real fish catcher. Catch a lot of walleyes on it as well. 
Uh, if I'm getting into some shallower water, they make a shallow sunny bee, so that's more of that two to four foot range. Um, if I get into some dirtier, murkier water, I might want to go with one of the little bit wider crankbaits. These are just a diving B1 and a Bagley B1. They're gonna make a little bit more noise, but day in and day out, you know, especially up north, we got generally clear water. A sunny bee is just a real hard one to beat. Well, thanks, Jeff, for your time. Crankbaits, they do work well for both bass and walleye. And up next, it's time for a highlight destination feature. We're heading over to North Dakota. That's the beauty of these North Dakota walleyes and some, they're so fertile, the lakes grow so many big fish so fast. North Dakota boasts some fantastic angling opportunities with several notable lakes that attract anglers from around the country. North Dakota crappies, who would have thought? Right now, one of the crown jewels is Lake Sakakawea. Located in the western part of North Dakota, this reservoir stretches over 180 miles and is known for its trophy-sized fish. Anglers can target walleye, northern pike, smallmouth bass, and more, making it a popular destination for various anglers. Another great fishing spot is Lake Audubon, situated in the central part of the state. This reservoir covers 11,000 acres and is known for its abundant walleye population. The lake also offers opportunities to catch northern pike, smallmouth bass, and other species. With its scenic surroundings and excellent fishing prospects, Lake Audubon is a favorite among local anglers. Devil's Lake is another famous fishing destination in North Dakota. This expansive lake stretches over 180,000 acres, and the fishing for walleye, perch, pike, and white bass is often outstanding. With its fluctuating water levels, anglers can adapt their fishing techniques throughout the year, adding to the excitement of fishing in this unique environment. The upper end of Lake Oahe, which extends into North Dakota from South Dakota, is also worth mentioning. This massive reservoir stretches hundreds of miles and is famous for its exceptional walleye fishing in this stretch of river. Covering all the fantastic fishing opportunities in these North Dakota lakes is impossible. However, if you're an avid angler or a casual fishing enthusiast, Lake Sakakawea, Lake Audubon, Devil's Lake, and the upper end of Lake Oahe offer an unforgettable fishing experience with their diverse fish populations and breathtaking scenery. Fishing isn't the only opportunity in North Dakota. This state is a hidden gem waiting to be explored. Discover the diverse beauty of this enchanting state and immerse yourself in its rich history and breathtaking landscapes. Begin your journey with a visit to Theodore Roosevelt National Park, a true testament to the legendary president's love for nature and conservation. As you venture through the park's expansive wilderness, be prepared to witness awe-inspiring display of rugged badlands, picturesque prairies, and a remarkable array of wildlife. Continue your exploration of North Dakota's cultural tapestry by paying a visit to the National Buffalo Museum. Immerse yourself in the history and significance of the iconic American bison, a symbol of resilience and strength. Learn about the Native American tribes who revered this majestic creature and the important role it played in their way of life. Make your way to the Plains Art Museum in Fargo for a dose of artistic inspiration. Delve into contemporary and traditional art featuring works by local, regional, and international artists. Experience the vibrant expeditions that showcase a diverse range of mediums, from paintings and sculptures to photography and mixed media. You can also unleash your own creativity at one of the museum's workshops or events. Finally, set off on the Maha Day Trail for an unforgettable adventure through North Dakota's rugged beauty. This 144 mile long trail offers outdoor enthusiasts the opportunity to hike, bike, or horseback ride through breathtaking landscapes of rolling prairies, dense forests, and sweeping valleys. Immerse yourself in the untamed wilderness as you travel through the hills and gorges, cross sparkling rivers, and witness stunning vistas that will take your breath away. Whether you seek your next fishing adventure, cultural immersion, or artistic inspiration. North Dakota has something to captivate every traveler. Come and experience this magic for yourself in this hidden treasure of the Midwest.
Yes, there's a lot of great fishing opportunities throughout North Dakota all year round. I really enjoy going over there in the springtime for the great shore fishing. It's time for this week's Buzz Bite Reports. To kick it off, we're going to join Johnny Candle in North Dakota. Folks, there's probably no better time to get to Devil's Lake than right now. The walleye fishing is just as hot as the summer weather. The bobber bite continues on isolated offshore rock piles. Things that top out 10 to 12 feet, windy days get up on top, calmer days, that bottom edge where it transitions to the mud, anywhere from 15 to maybe 18 feet of water. Use a jig head, your favorite color, doesn't matter, or a plain hook with a leech, and things are just rolling right along there. Bottom bouncers and spinners are working very, very well. Look at the weed edges, maybe 10 to 12 feet of water, or that old Devil's Lake shoreline out at 18 to 22 feet. Hammered silver, hammered gold blades are great with about a third of a night crawler and the Max UV Glow Burst Smile Blade. Crankbaits are working also, trolling lead core in those same depths. I start with white, chrome, and perch. One of those three colors is gonna fire. If you wanna cast jigs on a windy day, that's working well too. Look for wind blown rocky points or weed edges. Bottom line is folks, the walleye bite is hot here on Devil's Lake. You better get here soon. Thanks Johnny. Now let's head to the Alexandria area with Joe Segura. We are still catching plenty of walleye around the area. Uh, we'll see those big bait balls and those hooks right in it suspended and then we'll troll our crankbaits through there catching walleyes that way. Um, sometimes they're right up tight to the weed edge and we'll troll uh, linny rigs or spinners along there catching plenty of walleye. Some days you go to those areas and they are not in the bait balls, they're not on the weed edge. We just can't seem to locate them. Um, if you keep after it, you will catch them. Um, you just have to just try to pick it apart. Granted, you're looking for a few fish on those days where they just don't want to bite. If you're willing to switch species, go to bass, go to sunfish, go to crappie, going to what is willing to bite, you're going to have a much better day. I mean, we can catch a 50, 60 bass in a day, or you can try to catch a handful of walleye that don't really want to bite that day. Save the walleye for the day when you go out there and they're just loaded all over the place and you can hammer them. So um, if the fishing's tough, don't mind switching up the species. Thanks, Joe. Now let's head to Leech Lake with Toby Kavalivog. We just finished up a month camp here at Trapper's Landing Lodge where we had all kinds of pros fishing all kinds of species here on beautiful Leech Lake. The Pelican Island area, the south end of the lake, the humps. This whole corner of the lake, it's all about the rocks. The eight, 10, 12 foot rocks, a little bit deeper up the edges, lots and lots of walleyes, and also where the smallmouth are. The smallmouth are a little bit shallower than the walleyes, but they're right there too. Bobbers and leeches, plastics, jig wraps. Try the bobbers and leech first, doesn't spook fish as much. If you can't get them to go on that, catch a jig and wrap or a plastic, work it through there pretty fast, and you'll catch walleyes. A smallmouth, you're gonna wanna throw a tube jig. You're gonna wanna throw a Ned rig or a drop shot with a plastic. Right now we have walleyes out in the middle of the trench all the way up to five mile that you can catch to pull lead core, crankbaits with shad wraps, um, sand flats up by Goose Island up here. Those flats are starting to produce fish on shad wraps. So trolling is now becoming a part of the part of the game plan for walleyes. It's summer fishing here on Leech Lake and that's this week's angling buzz fishing report. Thanks Toby. Now let's head to Lake Vermilion with Billy Rosner. We're definitely into our summer patterns up here on Vermilion. The walleyes think transitions and your deeper weed lines. On, on Vermilion, most of your weed lines, we get 10, 12 foot out of it. Uh, that's about as deep as you're going to find them. Pulling light bait rigs, watch your electronics. If you, you know, find a bunch of grouped up, jigging wraps are putting out fish, and uh, also hairy jigs are putting out walleyes too. And then some of your sand flats too, where you get that sand grass, that char grass that's up six, eight inches. That's holding perch, and there's walleyes in there too. The depths on that are kind of all over the place, 16 to 22 feet. Catching some nice northern pike on one of those deeper weed lines, throwing spinner baits. And uh, for the spinner baits too, throw the larger profile ones. Uh, that larger profile will get you into a little nicer pike. Have a great week and be safe out there. Thanks, Billy. Now let's head over to Michigan with Captain Chad Diltz. In the northern areas of Lake Michigan, a lot of the salmon anglers and trout anglers are doing pretty good high in the water column. We recently had some cooler nights and some north wind, which has brought that thermocline up a lot higher. A lot of the steelhead are being caught. There are some straggler cohos, but most people are doing good in that 30 to 50 down range. Vertical jigging for lake trout and other species is also doing really well. Our smallmouth are well into their post spawn, both on the inland lakes and on the Grand Traverse Bay region. 
Um, if you want to get out and get after a smallmouth bite, drop shotting over the deep water trenches, uh, deep uh, breaks, steep structures, humps, things like that are doing really well. Uh, tubes and drop shots, as we said before. Uh, walleye anglers are starting to see an established thermocline on the inland lakes, so trolling is doing really well in that regard. And now it's time for our cool products brought to you by Omnia Fishing. We're going to start out with the Northland Rumble Shiner. Now you can cast this, you can troll this, but this is a great bait designed for trolling. This specific model, this is the size 8, and it does dive down to 9 to 14 feet. And great color patterns on this. You see a kind of a narrow design. This has a tight wobble action, mimics bait fish really, really well. Definitely something you want to check out for a smaller profile, narrow profile bait for trolling, the Rumble Shiner from Northland Tackle. And next up, another trolling bait, this time from Rapala, the Deep Tail Dancer. And you can see right away the lip design. This is a big lip on here. This thing dives very deep. It has a wide wobble to it. VMC hooks on here, bright color patterns. Like this, this would be great for walleye, no question. And this bait, this will dive 15 feet. This is size seven, 15 feet down. This is really great for getting down, especially during the summertime, late summer when fish can get deep. You wanna check out the Deep Tail Dancer series from Rapala. And next from Blackfish, the Cool Charge Swift Long Sleeve. I've used this shirt a lot, especially in the summer heat. It's very comfortable, it stretches and it feels really lightweight, and it has a cool charge technology which helps wick away moisture to keep you comfortable and dry all day long. It's also rated for 50 plus UPF, so this will help block the sun. And just a great, comfortable long sleeve shirt from Blackfish, the Cool Charge Swift Long Sleeve. Well, it is bug season, and they can get stuck to your boat and truck and sea foam has a great product to help remove organic crud, like bugs and water stains, aptly named Bugs Be Gone. It's very easy to use, just spray it on a cool, dry surface, wipe it with a wet towel, microfiber towel or cloth, and it removes organic crud, like bugs, to keep your boat and your truck looking great. And next up, the Bounce and Troll Rod from St. Croix. Now this is designed for trolling, obviously, and bottom bouncing. See, I have a bottom bouncer on here. This thing is rigged up and ready for some deep walleye fishing. This specific one is a seven foot, medium heavy power, moderate action. That moderate action allows for the flexibility in the middle section to the end of the rod with that heavier uh, bottom bouncer, and then enough backbone on here to set the hook on a big fish. And these are perfectly designed with awesome St. Croix components from front to end. The Bounce and Troll Icon Rod from St. Croix. You can shop online anytime at omniafishing.com. And up next, it's time for our Technique of the Week. One of the key differences about fishing a crankbait in the grass is, is the whole general idea about around a crankbait that changes in direction are what triggers the bite. So if you're fishing a DT6 or a square bill around the bank, as that bait's creaming around, banging off docks and rocks and wood, it changes direction when it hits something and that's when that's what triggers the bite, makes the fish bite the lure. So as you're fishing around grass, it's coming along and it gets, ticks the weeds, ticks the weeds, maybe it gets stuck in the weeds. You wanna, you wanna be able to reel it dig it down there and then snap. And as soon as it bolts out of there, it pauses for a second before you start reeling again. That's what triggers a lot of those bites. So keeping in mind that you always want the bait to be doing something different. Stop and go, you know, speed it up, slow it down, do different things to make the bait change direction because you're not hitting hard cover like you would with a lot of other presentations and a lot of other crankbait situations. You know, bass fishing is really super presentation specific associated to rod and reel and line based on whatever presentation you happen to be fishing. And a lot of the hardcore bass guys would have to say that uh, glass or composite glass rods are the best rods for cranking. I'm fishing with a glass St. Croix with a medium heavy 
uh, moderate action rod. And it, it's, it actually has a little of num number of really interesting attributes. One, number one, it's relatively soft action, but then it loads up, as you can see, about one third back. So it gives you the power once the fish bite on the bait. bait. But you want that glass rod for a lot of times for any type of like moving baits like this is because the fish come up and they hit the bait and a lot of times you'll have it with a really sensitive graphite rod, you'll pull the bait out of the fish's mouth. And what you want to do is have the fish come up and as the bait's moving along, they can actually close down on it. Then not only that is once you load up on the fish, keep her tight and keep the fish pinned to land the fish. Got another one? This is a Daiwa 6.3 to 1 Tatula SV TW. And then the line on here is really important. That's a fluorocarbon. This happens to be 14 pound test suffix, advanced fluorocarbon. One thing nice about that, it's got a little bit of stretch, but it's one of the biggest things for crankbait fishing. It's super abrasion resistance. In a lot of different cranking situations, you're ripping through rocks, bouncing over wood, weeds and stuff. But it's, it's a com combination of the rod, reel, and line that's really efficient for this type of cranking. The crankbaits, they're really great for covering a lot of water, and especially this time of year, triggering big bass to bite and we can help to avoid the spread of aquatic invasive species anytime you're leaving any body of water. Remember, clean, drain, dry. If you have any questions about this video, let us know down below in the comments. And here's another video from Angling Buzz.